Welcome to our New Zealand cruising adventure. Hey there guys, it's Carly. Welcome back to my channel or hello if you're new here and welcome to our New Zealand cruise. So we are traveling on board the Carnival Splendor and making three official stops in New Zealand but also doing some scenic cruising as well. So if you guys are keen for some family fun travel adventure, grab yourself a cuppa and let's get into the video. So Dave and I did book an ocean view room and when we come in, the first thing that we have is our little bathroom area. So it's just got your shower, toilet, basin, very standard. And then in this area, we have a little seating section with some towels, a little place that you can relax, do your makeup, etc. Some big bottles of water, which will come in handy for sure. And then we have our bed with our big, glorious little porthole there and a view. Right, I'm equipped with mine and Dave's room keys on our lanyards and I'm gonna head up and start exploring the boat. So upon first entering the ship, we headed up to Lido Deck or Deck 9, which is the main hub for relaxation on board and grabbed ourselves a little beverage from one of the bars up there. We were actually traveling with both my parents, Dave's parents, his sister, brother-in-law and their kids. So we sat and relaxed for a minute while we waited for them to arrive and once they had, we set out to explore the boat. The Carnival Splendor features an over 18 section at the rear of the boat, which has a small pool and some hot tubs as well as a bar. It also has a gym, a mini golf area, and some large slides, as well as two smaller children's swimming areas. And then in the middle of the ship on Lido deck, there is also the main pool and the big screen for the dive-in movies. Our ship was docked at Circular Quay, which meant that while we were waiting for departure, we had fantastic views of both the Sydney Opera House and the Harbour Bridge, and was able to take advantage of that as we pulled out of Sydney Harbour. If I could take you back to my youth And show you what I wish I'd knew My will is strong with a place to lean In the moment I hung best belief The other ring of my wrist is gold
There are a number of free dining options on board. However, we did book the 515 dinner session at the restaurant and did go there every night and take advantage of their three course menu. And we're all super impressed with the dinner options. During the morning for breakfast, we headed up to the buffet and got ourselves a selection of fruits and yogurts and pastries and different things such as eggs, bacon. They had a whole heap of options available. Welcome to our first day at sea. I have taken my seasickness tablets this morning because we are out on the open ocean and she is a bit choppy at the moment. Um, we sort of woke up early but hopped out of our room about 8.30 and headed up to deck three where we grabbed ourselves some coffees to start off our day and then moseyed on up to deck nine where we were able to go through the buffet and get some breakfast, just chilling outside and eating that. I'm now back in our room and I'm going to get dressed into my workout gear and head on up to deck five. Deck five has a deck that goes around the whole way of the ship so you can go for a nice long walk and I want to get out and experience some of the fresh air and get some exercise in as well. We got time on our side We're in a state of hope I need you on my fire I want you to know That every time you're away I long for you so much I can find my way Unfortunately, the swell started picking up significantly and despite taking numerous ginger travel sickness tablets, I was not feeling good. And during this whole day and evening, I was not able to keep any food or drink down and it really put a damper on the experience. And I saw you. We've got our second day at sea today. Thankfully, the weather is a little bit better. It's currently not raining and the swell has died down a bit. Last night was hectic and I was not feeling good whatsoever. So definitely not taking advantage of all of the opportunities we had on board. Today, I'm just trying to take it easy and hopefully recover and hopefully we can have a little bit better swell and I can get out and about and enjoy myself a bit more. It's our third day at sea and our first official scenic day. It's currently 7.30 in the morning. We have a late sunrise. The sun is beautifully tipping over the New Zealand outline at the moment. We've got some um, mountainous jaggy peaks as we're starting to maneuver into the Fiordlands National Park. So we'll be touring some of the beautiful sounds starting off with Milford Sound this morning. We are hoping to get up there early, get ourselves some breakfast and secure a good position to be able to see all of the scenery, the waterfalls and just the beauty of the New Zealand coastline. It's some kind of devotion that brings me down. That without my love for the ocean, I will be no
We came into Milford Sound quite early in the morning and as the sun hadn't risen yet over the mountains, it was quite windy and quite chilly. However, we did rug up to brave those chilly winds and get out on deck to experience the beauty of the high mountainous peaks and waterfalls. The Fiordland National Park is a region consisting of 1.2 million hectares of mountains, forests and alpine waterways sitting on New Zealand's southwestern tip of the southern island. It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site whose Maori name translates into Place of the Green Stone. This region has been a place of significance for early Maori who used it for fishing, hunting and gathering of New Zealand jade. What we see today is an iced carved landscape that was created millions of years ago by a glacier. And as you look up, despite being in mid-autumn, many of the tallest high peaks are capped in snow. I've earned out like a wandering Milford Sound is probably one of the most well-known out of the sounds in the Fiordland National Park, primarily because of its dramatic waterfalls, but also because it is the only one that is accessible by road. It is also the only sound where we weren't able to traverse through. We did need to come to an end point and then actually turn around and go back out of the sound before moving on down to our next one. To accompany our scenery today, we also headed to the deli for lunch, which is located at the rear of the ship on deck nine, and that provides sub style sandwiches. We then secured ourselves some sunny lounges out the back in the Serenity pool area, which is where we pretty much relaxed throughout the entire day, which provided a cozy backdrop for the gorgeous scenery. What I found was nowhere near as nice No matter the rain, no matter the storm I'm coming home, I'm coming home Upon leaving Milford Sound, our next fjord was Thompson Sound and that bleeds into Dusky Sound. I think I actually preferred the other sounds than Milford. Milford was very wide, which meant that the cliffs just seemed so far away from you. However, these ones were a little bit more of a thinner channel and it really just felt like everything was more on top of you. You were more in touch with the landscape and you're able to experience it at a closer glance, which was really cool. Mum had seen a guy out the back taking professional like photos on his massive camera and when I asked her to take a few clips of me she decided to be a bit creative with it and experiment with a variety of different angles because she saw that guy doing it and it seemed to look good so why not have a try herself. Our final sound of the day was Doubtful Sound, which is one of the longest and deepest of the fjords. It was actually named in 1770 by Captain James Cook, who was passing by and saw the sound, but noted that he wouldn't go inside because he was doubtful that they would ever return. So he named Doubtful Harbour and subsequently Doubtful Sound was created as well. However, all of these sounds do also have traditional Maori names that I am not going to attempt to pronounce to avoid butchering them in front of my New Zealand friends.
Welcome to Dunedin. This is our first port of call. While well, it's starting off as a rainy morning, we are getting out on foot and exploring the city. We just walked up a massive hill, feeling good, feeling energized. Here's our view, all the way down to the water. We were originally bummed because we'd planned to do a tour in Dunedin and go to Olveston House and a bunch of different places and it was booked out. But upon getting the map and wandering around, we realized that the city is actually super walkable. Although granted, that was a large hill. Um, so we're going to walk there instead. On our way up to Olveston House, we did traverse through a beautiful neighborhood with large historic heritage buildings. And we were able to get into the grounds of Olveston House for free. We were originally thinking when we got up there that we were going to pay the admission fee to get into the house and have a look around. But we decided against it and that we would just spend a bit of time wandering around the gardens instead and there was some beautiful gardens with different flowers and plants and then there was also a greenhouse that we were able to go in and experience the beautiful flowers in there as well. Altogether, I'm really glad that we made that trip up the massive hill to get there and were able to see some of the scenery of Dunedin along the way as well. Olveston House, we cut across town to have a look at one of the many cathedrals in Dunedin. And then shortly down the hill from that was one of the breweries. We did go inside the shop of the brewery and it actually had some really fantastic merch. I would definitely suggest going in there and checking it out. We were contemplating getting ourselves a beer. However, it was still early in the day. So we decided to pass that up for the moment and continue down the hill through one of the Queen's gardens to the Chinese garden. It does cost $10 per adult entry into the Chinese gardens and while they are small they are incredibly beautiful and well designed and I did think that it was worth the money. 
we did spend a fair bit of time wandering around and taking copious amounts of photos. Dave was actually feeling unwell on this day, so he stayed on board the boat while mum, dad and I braved the initially dreary weather to explore the city and we did have a fantastic time. After the gardens, we hit up the main area of town and grabbed ourselves some Starbucks coffees while having a peruse through the shops. We did also happen to find an op shop and had a look in there, but no luck today, unfortunately. At this point, it was lunchtime and we were hungry. So we called into the Dunedin Social Club and this was honestly the best $13 pub lunch I have ever had. I had the tacos and then I also started gobbling into some of dad's chicken as well, which was also fantastic. On the way back to the boat, rather being dropped off at the port, we got dropped off into the port town of Port Chalmers so that we could have a quick little wander through there and make our way back to the port ourselves. We have reached our next destination, so it is time to end part one of my New Zealand travel vlog here. But make sure you stay tuned for part two. We are traveling to Christchurch and Wellington next. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe down below. I put out new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. With that being said, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your week and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye guys.